Is this it? This is the savior of corporate greed and closed source research? Would our wallet no longer suffer from the reign of Dolly 2? <clears throat> Okay, so recently, I came across this pretty hilarious meme on Twitter, basically comparing Stable Diffusion with Dolly 2 on text-to-image synthesizing ability. It's pretty much poking fun on how Dolly 2 is heavily censored and bad at generating anime-related images while also not being free. Stable Diffusion, on the other hand, is completely open source and free, and can even run on your own computer. The models aren't public yet, but it's only a matter of time. Well, this actually piqued my curiosity about how each of them performs, and since since I have not made any dedicated Stable Diffusion or Dolly 2 videos, I have organized some comparisons between these two in this video, ranging from prompt generations, the pros and cons, and what you should expect when approaching these two AI models. For those of you who don't know what Stable Diffusion is, it is a project funded by Stability AI and Runway and is built upon the research paper High Resolution Image Synthesis with Latent Diffusion Models. The project was mainly trained on the Leon 5B database, which is a data set full of 5.85 billion clip filtered image text pairs, and is currently the largest open sourced image text database out there. Stable Diffusion is one of the lightest text to image synthesis models where it only requires at least 5 GB VRAM and generates in around 3 seconds, compared to Disco Diffusion that needs at least 12 GB, while Dolly 2 probably cannot even run on a consumer's GPU. And for those of you who have been living under a rock and are not aware what Dolly 2 is, well, you came to the wrong video. Okay, it roughly does the same thing as Stable Diffusion, but instead, OpenAI doesn't really want to tell us about how they did it. What I know for sure though is that they both use Clip and Diffusion, and OpenAI also used the same data set for Dolly 1 to train Dolly 2, which is around 250 million images. For those 250 images, unfortunately, I highly suspect that there's a huge portion filled with stock images. You'll see why later. Later. Aside from basic text to image generations, there are also other functions that are available or are being developed aside from Stable Diffusion and Dolly 2. Since Stable Diffusion is open sourced, it is much easier to make some very interesting implementations. For example, this collage tool where you can draw a rectangle and it can fill that rectangle with a prompt that you enter. Or potentially generate these kinds of videos where I have no clue what they did, but it looks pretty cool. There's also a text to video editing tool that is in development and will soon be on Runway's editing app. As you can see, the possibility is pretty much endless with this and can definitely adapt to what Dolly 2 has to offer. On the other hand, Dolly 2 text to image synthesis contains functions that are relatively limited since it's not open sourced for people to implement. Functions such as generating variations of a generated image or in painting tool where you can import an image and select an area where you want Dolly 2 to impaint upon with a specific prompt. These might be some rather basic functions which Dolly 2 actually does very well and with a high image coherence. There's also this very popular uncrop function where you can expand an image's borders. So if you input any image and make Dolly 2 uncrop outwards, it can feel like you are zooming out of the frame. So from the Dolly 2 uncropping function, some people got really creative and made some pretty sick zoom in, zoom out, or even panning videos. But yeah, very ironic coming from a guy that doesn't have access to Dolly 2 giving a tour about Dolly 2 functions, huh? Now moving on to comparing the results between Stable Diffusion and Dolly 2, I just want to put a disclaimer here that this is a very general comparison. There are quite a few Stable Diffusion models and they might slightly vary from each other, but the same could be said when comparing to Dolly 2 because we don't know how many models they have and how often they switch around, while they also do pre-prompt and post-prompt processing. I just hope I can provide some brief insights on their differences to you guys. So starting with the key to everything, the prompt text. Sometimes long and specific prompt texts are highly difficult for the models to generate the images accurately. Both are still bad at counting as usual, but aside from that, Dolly 2 performs much better than Stable Diffusion on hyper-specific details and long prompts. 
It seems that in stable diffusion, some texts have too much weight over the others, so a blend between multiple contrary concepts sometimes becomes difficult to draw. In the generated images below, you can observe this problem when concepts oppose each other or require heavy presumptions. It is impossible to perform the running action in space. Thus, a ground and a person is needed in order to make sense of the drawing. Dolly 2 did exactly this, while Stable Diffusion may have just given up after seeing the word space or abyss and have no trace of the word running in its generations. This may be an extreme case, but you can see more of this from this board made by my friend Ethan. In this case, I would describe Dolly 2 as having the ability to be more creative and obey completely to the prompt, but I am definitely not suggesting Stable Diffusion is not creative at all. Let me explain. Dolly 2 having the ability to be more creative does not necessarily mean the images that it generated are more creative. It kind of just mean how it can understand complex concepts and generate that concept into reality. On the other hand, some may say that the inconsistency across stable diffusion results might as well be the cause of a large diversity in its uncensored dataset and model, which is also the selling point of it. And even with the inability to understand the text perfectly, stable diffusion is still capable of creating some really beautiful pieces. And and sometimes, rephrasing may be the key to solve the misinterpretation of prompts. There is also an interesting observation where, generally, stable diffusion images are generated very aesthetically pleasing. And on the contrary, Dolly 2's generations are much more dull and plain if you don't provide enough modifiers. Like in the example below, stable diffusion generates nice book covers with interesting choice of coloring and objects, while Dolly 2 creates very dull and boring images of an open book with the text Joy slapped on top of it. Some do call Dolly 2 the stock image generator and the stock image style is especially obvious when you wanted to generate some really simple and plain images, like a book. This is one of the reasons why I speculate the dataset is partly made out of stock images. And it makes sense because stock images themselves are well labeled and are easily convertible to become an image text pair. And also a lot of other research do that too. Another thing that I do not have hard evidence on is that stable diffusion is more keen on generating faces on its images. And as you can see from the meme comparison at the start of the video, famous faces were generated very accurately without much difficulty. Comparing to Dolly too, it can be seen avoiding to generate clear and accurate close-up faces, especially famous ones. This might be due to its censor policy where you cannot use actual names of people, and also violence, blood, and anything potentially controversial, and it'll literally get you banned if you do, like the meme illustrated at the start. <laughs> yeah, imagine getting banned just make that meme. But whether or not the model is not able to generate faces is completely another story. It's hard to say, but noting stable diffusion is a lot more keen on generating faces is a much better conclusion. On the other hand, there are just some keywords that Dolly 2 is pretty bad at, like generating anything Japanese anime themed. You can tell that the dataset does not have anything anime related, which is really surprising. Stable Diffusion straight up does a way better job, and they also published an anime related video too in their test labs, which is pretty neat. Another problem with keywords and modifiers is when mentioning 3D or 8K, Dolly 2 has this problem where it can generate very poorly lighted images. So it must be. It must be trained on stock images, right? Imagine stock image companies selling rice to them though. They must be selling their own demise right there. Oh, why do you want to buy all our stock images? Oh, because I want to build something that can replace you. I mean, there is nothing wrong with creating a stock image generator, but let me just point out that there are some really out of place lightings and it's hilarious seeing Dolly 2 accurately regenerating them. To show some more general comparisons between Dolly 2 and Stable Diffusion, there are some really good ones that exist on the internet already, like this one, or this, and this. So yeah, at the end of the day, both are great in their own ways. However, free stuff is infinitely better than paid. So Save with Diffusion wins, of course. And yeah, that's it for this video. Big shout out to Andrew Lascellius, Chris Ledoux, Dan Kennedy, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. If you like my videos, you already know what to do. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.